Let's give it up for our next TED Like Talk. Hello everyone, you can hear me right? Thank you for being here. Um, so, thank you for the introduction, such a nice introduction. And uh, I'll start. So, today's topic, definitely it's about visuals, so I'll start with a story. So, when I was eight years old, I fell in love with the bright red sandals, decorated with little flowers, as you see. I was so excited that I rushed and showed it to my grandfather. And to my surprise, something that I did not want to happen happened. He hated them, absolutely hated them, and it showed. And instead, what he picked out was a pair of sandals that was fully covered in newspaper print, like legit newspaper print, as you see. I was actually very confused. To my mind at the time, why would anybody choose something which was so weird? So later, years passed and I started seeing this pattern like everywhere, in umbrellas, t-shirts, bags, even saris. I'm not sure if you've seen this picture. Like this was a major hit at the time. The Carrie Bradshaw wore this Christian Dior dress. And it sort of became a trend. And it still was not making sense to me. And it, but it made me wonder, like why do people prefer something over another? Like this was a question that kept coming to my mind. So let me introduce myself. I am Swati, a visual designer by heart, but a product designer by choice, I would say. Uh, I have a master's degree and I've experienced working in IT, edtech and also artificial intelligence. And my topic for today is visual dynamics as a catalyst for innovation. Uh, thinking about the newspaper print now, as a designer, I can come up with several reasons to support my grandfather's choice back that time. It could be just all similarity and principle uh, reason. The repetition uh, and similarity of the newspaper print, this creates a sense of unity. The text, the stark black and white contrast, that taps into the figure and ground relationship, making the print very visually striking. Uh, when a design is rare or unexpected, that, uh, like the newspaper print that you see, uh, on an apparel it creates cognitive dissonance and that to our brain is intriguing and that creates surprise. So that is the principle of uni uh, uniqueness and scarcity. Another is, it creates a sense of comfort and trust because you're familiar with the pattern. So that uh, binds to the sem semantic memory and familiarity. And the last one is cultural influence, where in India, literacy is deeply respected and sought after. Uh, so wearing newspaper print might be taken as a sense of wisdom or rebellion or even intellectual wisdom. But do you think like my grandfather was thinking of all this when he decided that? No, right? For him, it was simple, like smart people who read newspapers. Newspapers make you look smart. And maybe wearing newspapers is the epitome of smartness. Deriving from this thought process, we can uncover some fundamentals. Like design connects with us on a deeper level. Nost it evokes memories, like nostalgia and memories. It tells stories. And it builds an emotional connect with everybody. And this is the heart of innovation to me. Creating something that re resonates with people and changes their life for better. Innovation is not always about invention or creativity. So if I have to define innovation, I'll define it like this. It is incremental novelty that is valuable. Incremental novelty in ideas, products, and processes, while that is valuable to users or society at large. Do you think that using newspaper print was the only such case? No, you see such examples like everywhere. Think of a natural moment of a pulling of a branch. It springs back. And this is something that inspired bows and arrows. I'm sure you might agree. So this particular bows and arrows is a common UI pattern also, that is pull to refresh. So this interaction uses physical movement to trigger an action that we like use on a daily basis. It is very intuitive and integrates seamlessly when we want to refresh. Uh, what we see on screen. Another example that came to my head, please don't quote me on this. So this is like uh, how early humans used to, used to interlock leaves to create uh, uh, household items or structures. 
so this practice evolved into weaving which followed a consistent grid like pattern this weaving led to creation of fabrics products furniture that you might be seen today and this structured approach is something that i feel led to the foundation of the digital grid system that you see all around you and this provides the backbone for layouts and web and app design so this ensures harmony in your design balance and organization all this is done to help users understand the information that is present uh, in an effort in the most effortless manner possible but if we think about it why do we do all this like as designers and the answer that i get is that's the designer's role designer's role is to help users make sense of the information that they have and information is for everybody so here comes the point of accessibility think about how you instantly recognize the sound of an approaching ambulance of a fire truck the lal bati that you hear is something is a sign of something important that is approaching it has a classic high pitch that you instantly recognize but what about those who are hard to hear apple's new accessibility features help deaf people or somebody who is hard to hear through visual cues on their apple carplay screen something that you see on the left not only that now they've evolved that into something that now they can through uh, sound haptics or music haptics they can enjoy music on their phones so that is pretty exciting this is a this is a very cool ex example of using existing te technology to make information accessible and also delightful i'll go back to visual cues so consider the simple light indicator of a battery you got to put it on charge when there is only one light blinking there is no learning curve that is needed here it's intuitive it's very simple and think of the success screen that you all must have seen how many times have you locked your screen without even checking what's on the next page it's almost always for me so this simple check mark experience solves a latent user problem a latent user problem that we all face and not explicitly express that the important part is done and now i can move on with my life i don't need any other information so think of visual communication like a puzzle images illustrations color contrast all these pieces must come together seamlessly to create something that is like truly resonating with people but we can't stop there there needs to be interactions there needs to be haptic sounds feedback loops and so much more but coming back to the newspaper story <laughs> so 16 years 16 years after my grandfather liked those newspaper print i found myself working on a visual research project there the idea was to understand the users and once again even though by the time i had so much more clarity but but i was asking myself the same set of questions the questions were who the users are what do they like and why they like it so understanding who the users are this comes from understanding the user archetypes and their social habitat what do they like for this what i did was i deep dived into all the categories that they have like technology retail food fashion design and art and why they like it this is something that binds the above two questions together by understanding their emotions and their ethos history culture social and economic factors so this was a very detailed study but what there were few insights that i found which were actually very fascinating and i'll take you through those so one this is like mostly from indian context so please bear that in mind uh first insight was users don't read they browse so there was a study conducted where uh, the researchers uh, created a fake social media platform and asks you uh, which asked users to accept some terms and conditions in those terms and conditions those users were letting go the right, letting off the rights of their first born child as payment and to your surprise 98% of users actually accepted those terms and conditions so do you need to go beyond languages it takes only 1/10th of a second to form a first impression and it takes only 50 milliseconds to form a sorry 1/10th of a second to form a first impression of a person and only 50 milliseconds which is also nearly the same to form an impression about a website so we do believe in love at first sight third that cultural diversity matters 85% of indian internet users show strong preference for localized and culturally relevant content which is why these stickers that you see on the screen became an instant hit on social networking platforms i'm sure the millennials might agree <laughs> i'm not sure if everybody else has seen 
and the third in a more sensory rich environment such as india rich detailed designs are more engaging not always but at times more engaging than minimalistic ones so the insight that we derive from here is we found that indian users have a higher tolerance for visual complexity so the daily experiences can be uh, another thing that ties to here is uh, i've expressed that this was mostly from uh, indian context and the day, but the daily experiences can be different for different audiences you're designing for but i felt that for indian market or emerging markets this uh, study is like a little more challenging why because with issues ranging from meeting basic needs such as water shortage or sitting in hour long traffic jams i'm sure you must have gone through it in the morning and dealing with economic and infrastructural constraints all this users often appreciate design that attempts to charm and surprise them so designs that delight is something that we all definitely definitely need so how to make the so the next problem comes how to make some informed visual design decisions this is the most common challenge that i have faced working in the industry this can feel tricky since most of the uh, designs that you come up with are considered as an afterthought and are often uh, made uh, are often thought of as subjective decisions so desi designers also feel constrained driven due to design systems brand guidelines and also tight timelines but there are some practical ways in which you can make your decisions more concrete and data driven this it can be achieved by considering visual design also as a continuous process so you all must be following some process design process for ux design but i am proposing here to follow the same or similar something for visual design as well so uh it is uh, it should be a consistent approach uh, starting with research iterations and testing also completing the loop with the improvement stage i will walk you through a list of steps for each of these uh that will ensure that visual designs are evaluated with data and tangible insights at every point so please bear with me these are going to be some verbose slides but <laughs> i i hope you will uh, find something from these so in the research stage as you see uh, the goal here is to gather insights to form our visual design choices you can do that by doing some user research where uh, you and you have the opportunity to understand the user needs and preferences from both cultural and emotional contexts second is competitor analysis where you can understand the current market trends that are performing well so this will ensure that users are getting familiar experiences in similar websites or products heuristic evaluation on your own product will ensure that usability principles such as contrast hierarchy alignment are followed are are followed and also the accessibility standards are met and last is of course the most important the brand alignment you need to follow the brand guidelines uh next is the iteration and improvement where you can actually create multiple variations of your designs uh but ensure that all your designs are coming from user uh uh are only coming from user uh, uh from users and stakeholders uh creating ab and multivariate versions for your design is obvious but you need to broaden the scope by exploring different layouts colors combinations and typography but everything uh depending on how much your brand allows it because not everybody would be happy if you like choose some very different color in your designs then it is also important to plan this plan your visual design stages in the shaping phase of your project this will allow you to uh not digress which we tend to do often and be like ship the products in the defined timelines and uh lastly you need to ensure that your visual elements are all optimized for better performance if it is not then it makes no sense lastly is the test phase where the goal is to validate the designs using data user using data and user feedback this is an important stage where you can set again some ab tests uh to ensure visual changes such as buttons layouts images are, are all in place uh this can also help you track engagement rates conversions or click rates for each variance which will further define the changes that you might propose for your next designs uh then heat maps and click maps i hope you know about it uh these are very interesting tools and very informative tools to help you understand if what you want to prioritize on your website is getting prioritized and if it is working uh 
test if the visuals, if the users are interacting with the visual elements as you're expecting them to. So this can be done by eye tracking and usability studies. Uh, and also analyze the scroll depth data. So in the websites, uh, it is important that you know that how much scrolling the user has done. So this will help you inform how much time the user is spending on the page and how much emphasis you need to put on the visuals so that it drives that. And uh, you can always gather feedback using preference surveys and user preferences. So yeah, all this may seem like a lot, but this will maybe help you make some uh, informed visual design choices. And uh, my attempt here is to reduce the subjectivity out of this topic. And uh, I believe, so I believe that visuals play a very crucial role in our daily lives, and it cannot be based on just hunches or preferences or biases. So yeah, that was about it. Uh, one second. OK. Uh, I think, uh, OK. I'll just uh, close this uh, talk with uh, the newspaper story, going back to the newspaper story. So I don't, ha I don't have these newspaper sandals anymore. But I do believe that this, but I do scream with delight whenever I see somebody wearing it. Trust me, I saw somebody wearing those yesterday on a scooty. I did a fail attempt of uh, also capturing the moment, but I couldn't. But it, is, it was never about fashion or aesthetics for me. It's still never, it is still not the case. But the connection, uh, what it does for me is that it connects me to my grandfather. The story tells the nostalgia and about maybe after today, the presentation that I'm doing now. I'll just conclude with this last statement that in this world of AI, like Quillbot that I'm working with, and data-driven uh, decisions and tools that we have all around us, I suggest you always, always add your own touch. Because design for users is important, and designing for delight is also very important. And this can happen only when you keep your artistic intelligence alive. That's it. Thank you. Uh, you had a question. The color for which a kind of like brand identity. Hmm. Let's say uh, every color has its own uh, significant role in terms of communicating a brand identity like red. The, the red communicates the strong, uh, blue has its own thing. Right. So when it comes down to designing for accessibility part, mm -hmm. in that terms, how do we consider that? So that's my question because this is something recently I have came across in the previous module a week ago mm -hmm. that I had this application which had its brand color as red mm -hmm. but while I was designing for the accessibility part I had to completely remove that and focusing on the aesthetics and the minimalism part right. that is something to be considered. So what's your take on that? Uh, I do believe like when the brand decides on a brand color or the primary colors that they have, they mostly consider the accessibility concerns and they always have these guidelines in which you uh, know that which typography, which color of font will go on what background. So if it is a deep red, they will, they will, they should have this in their guidelines that you should not have a darker text on it. So uh, check with the, check the brand guidelines and if the accessibility is impacted, then nobody would suggest you to use that right you should always ex uh, explore staying within the limits of the design guidelines but never stop yourself that this is the guideline this is how i'll use it this is the color and this is the way i should use this you can always play around with that and explore so that's what i'm suggesting uh, does anybody else have any question it's mostly a career related question so when you're talking about testing and eye tracking and uh, mm -hmm. scroll uh, scrolling through, I think, and um, probably uh, you're using some analytics tool to do that. Uh, so, do we, do designers need to know statistics as well, or is it just that you uh, do you have a team to do that, or how is that? So uh, today, in the previous talk that was happening there, somebody was mentioning that these days designers can't be the designers alone; they need to know the business side of it as well. And I think it's, uh, so in an organization, you always work with a PM. So if you are stuck, then you can always ask them the questions. But it is always, uh, uh, it is always good that you know uh, how the business works as well and how you can gather these data. Thank you. I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you, show, just, you just showed the design Sorry, process Sorry, I can't hear you. Hello? Yeah. Okay, so you did, uh, did just show the design process for visual design. Mm -hmm. I'm a product designer. I have followed those processes before. Mm -hmm. 
but when it comes to visual design, I didn't completely get what you meant by competitor uh, competitor analysis. Because in products, we can, we have other products to compare to. But when it comes to visual designs, we don't have a benchmark or something to compare to. So can you elaborate on that? Yeah, so that was uh, the seed that made me do this presentation. Because I've also felt that and I've also done that. Being a product designer, I've also like thought of visual design as the after state or the afterthought. But here, I'm also suggesting and I'm also trying to implement it in my design process to include visual design as a uh, from the starting stage to the last stage. So that's what the suggestion is and that's what I think would improve the entire design and will make for delightful experiences that we sometimes lack when we think of it, when we don't explore it enough and we think of it as an afterthought. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Any more questions? Oh, there is one. I don't have a question, but I really wanted to compliment you for your presentation. Really loved how you got the visuals into it and the storytelling about of the whole thing. So very engaging, very nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I was a little nervous. <laughs> All right, thank you everybody for being here.